It's been two years since CSGO's last operation ended. Let's look back at their history. A CSGO operation is like a temporary expansion pack that you can buy, normally for $5.99, but sometimes discounted later. They tend to launch alongside a bundle of community-made maps, and buying the pass grants you bonus case and weapon drops, and as time went on, the operations got increasingly elaborate, giving players missions and campaigns to complete, and a limited time to do so. The more you did, the more you leveled up your operation coin, which would then be proudly displayed on your account forevermore. If their maps were featured, the mappers would get a cut of the money that Valve made from the operation, so you were supporting them by buying the operation passes. There have been eight operations for CSGO since its release, the last of which ended exactly two years ago. Since then, CSGO has continued to receive new maps and updates, but not in the same style as the operations, which were big updates and came all at once. It seems like a lot of people miss these operations, which is funny because I remember them being slated by the community whenever they were on but now we haven't had any for two years, a lot of people feel it would be nice to have another. And why not? They served as a reason to load up the game and to play on maps and game modes you otherwise wouldn't have, and it was always something to get a bit excited about. The first was Operation Payback, released in early 2013, a few months after the map workshop was made. The Payback Pass cost $5.99 and gave you unlimited access to a map group featuring seven top-voted community maps, and this upgradable challenge coin. It started as bronze, but after 10 hours of play on Operation Maps would level up to silver, and after 50 would turn to gold. 50 hours of casual game mode, and you had 4 months to do it in. This first operation earned over $150,000, which was given to the map makers. Even if you hadn't bought the pass, players who had could still invite you to play on the exclusive maps. Of the 7 maps featured in Operation Payback, 4 of them were for Hostage Rescue which at the time had only just been updated to how the game mode plays today. Before this point, you had to rescue, or kill, them all, and instead of picking them up, you had them chase you through the level like something out of Terminator. Downtown was made by Tanuki. He was rather lucky with this operation, also getting his seaside diffuse map featured. That one has become a bit of a favourite, returning to the game numerous times. Motel looks like that level from Left 4 Dead 2, and had a working Glock with unlimited ammo that you could pick up just here which was later patched out. Museum is a very pretty hostage rescue map, being FMPone's first for CSGO. It's also the only hostage map from Operation Payback not to be refeatured in a later operation. Thunder is a remake of an original Counter-Strike hostage map designed by Chris Orty, who also made Aztec, Inferno and Vertigo. Favela looks like a Call of Duty map, and last is Library, which I believe is the smallest map ever to be featured. One room, one bombsite, and one hell of a lot of fun! Moving on to the second operation now, which was Operation Bravo. This launched in September of 2013 and was so popular it was extended into February of 2014. It featured eight community-made maps, but these could be played competitively, in casual, or in deathmatch mode. The requirements to reach a silver coin were slightly raised, needing at least 10 hours of play and 5 competitive wins. And for gold, you only had to play for 30 hours, but needed to win 15 competitive games. Owners of the pass had exclusive access to weapon drops from the Alpha Collection, and more chance of obtaining Bravo case drops. Its original price has all but disappeared from the face of the internet. Looking at the operation page now, you might think it cost just 99 cents, but old YouTube videos reveals that it did cost $5.99. Operation Bravo originally contained 7 new maps, but Seaside also returned, as Valve were eager to try it out as a competitive map. Later on in the Winter Offensive update, Valve bundled their new Cobbable and Overpass maps into it as well. Of the community-made ones, you'll know Agency and Cash, both of which became official maps in the game later on. Siege is a remake of an original Counter-Strike hostage rescue map. Alley is a diffuse map that would later be featured in Operation Phoenix. Chinatown is set in Chinatown, and Qualia is FM Pone's second map for CSGO, this time being diffuse. Ruins is a beautiful Aztec-like diffuse map. Operation Phoenix was a weird operation, containing no new maps but instead featuring the 8 most popular from previous ones, and being released just 15 days after Operation Bravo ended, still in February of 2014. Phoenix was a half-price operation at just $2.99, and owners of the pass got exclusive access to Operation Phoenix case drops for the duration of the operation. Requirements for the silver and gold coins were the same as before being 10 hours and 5 competitive wins for silver, and 30 hours and 15 competitive wins for gold. 
The four featured hostage maps were Agency, Downtown, Motel and Thunder, and the bomb defusals were Alley, Cash, Favela and Seaside. Operation Breakout, the fourth operation, changed things a bit and was released on July the 1st, 2014. The community-made maps were available to everybody, even those who didn't buy the Operation Pass. If I'm honest, I think that by now the appeal of playing new maps had worn off and the increasingly competitive nature of CSGO meant that players preferred sticking to the old Dust2, Inferno and so on. You'll find that the Operation maps reflected this. While Payback and Phoenix each contained four hostage rescue maps, this was reduced to just one or two from the breakout operation onwards. So instead of exclusive access to community-made maps in official game modes, how could Valve encourage people to buy the pass? They decided to add meaning to the games played on these new maps instead, introducing an operation journal, showing your stats for the operation, how your friends were doing, as well as featuring missions that you had to complete, like getting a certain number of kills with a particular weapon, or winning a competitive game on a map. For the silver coin, you needed to complete 5 missions, and for gold, 15. Completing a mission would drop you a skin from either the community-made Operation Breakout collection or from the Valve-made Baggage, Cobble, Overpass, or later the Cash collection. During this operation, Cash became the first community-made map to be permanently included in the game. Operation Breakout had two hostage rescue maps, the first being Insertion, which is a very unique map which let you choose your entry point. I think, aside from the Danger Zone maps, it's the biggest CSGO map ever to be included. And the other hostage rescue is the waterlogged jungle of Rush, full of small huts that were fun to Molotov, until you accidentally set fire to a hostage inside and lost all your money. Come to think of it, some of the diffuse maps were pretty large as well. There's Black Gold, set across an entire oil rig and developed by Az, Holiest Cow and the Horse Strangler. There's D Castle, which is based on a castle in Slovenia that I made a video about a year ago. The third is Mist, an atmospheric and unusual diffuse map situated in and around a mountain base with plenty of drops and climbs everywhere. And finally, D Overgrown, which I was rather fond of, maybe because I actually won all my games on it. Breakout ended in October of 2014, just over five years ago. But it wasn't long before the fifth operation, Vanguard, came out. In fact, even that was over five years ago now. I'll be covering the next four operations in another video, which I did initially want to include in this one, but I wasn't able to finish it in time for today. Like I said at the beginning, it's been exactly two years since the last operation, which is longer than we've ever had to wait before. But then it was almost a full year gap between Wildfire and Hydra, so I wouldn't rule it out just yet. Valve time moves in mysterious ways.